Over the next few days, Ryota decided to explore the fourth level of the Talula dungeon. There, they encountered a rare slime monster. Emily explained its rarity, leaving Ryota puzzled. Ryota allowed the slime to attempt to escape, but he used a freezing bullet to stop it and finished it off with a regular attack. Surprisingly, the drop item was not the usual food, it was a necklace, a first for Emily to witness from a rare monster. Ryota decided to give the necklace to Emily, who blushed, thinking it was a declaration of feelings. Emily was happy and thanked him, but her joy was short-lived when Ryota mentioned that the necklace would double her drop rate. Emily got upset, realizing she had misunderstood Ryota's intentions. It turned out that he gave her the necklace solely to increase her drop rate, not as a romantic gesture. However, Ryota often fails to grasp such situations. During their dungeon exploration, Ryota and Emily encountered regular slimes known as bat slimes. Emily's skills allowed her to defeat four of them, leading to eight bamboo shoots dropping an impressive outcome thanks to the double drop rate item they found. Once their adventure concluded, they returned home, and Ryota noticed Emily preparing their meal. He offered to help, but she declined, explaining that the kitchen was too small. Ryota then mentioned his idea of moving out, which worried Emily, thinking he might leave her behind. However, Ryota clarified that they could afford a nicer place together, but they needed to save a bit more money for that. The next day, Ryota planned to gather more bamboo shoots to earn money for their new home. He took the bamboo shoots to the trading center to sell them, where he met Urza, an acquaintance who mentioned the difficulty of appraising them. Suddenly, a girl named Erica Macy approached Ryota and asked if she could have his bamboo shoots. She showcased impressive knife skills and praised the taste of the bamboo shoot, even when it was raw. Erica Macy turned out to be a renowned culinary expert in their world. She offered to buy all the bamboo shoots, explaining their potential value due to her approval. Urza convinced Ryota to sign an exclusive contract with their trading center to sell the bamboo shoots as a branded product. Later, Ryota returned to the Nihonium dungeon to increase his strength stat, with the goal of reaching rank S. There, he encountered a girl who was part of a party of three men dealing with a skeleton. The girl used an air box to capture the air supposedly dropped by monsters. An old man explained that they were essentially selling air, deceiving people by packaging it in boxes and claiming it to be valuable. This operation was craftily advertised as Princess Air. Intrigued by this unusual business model, Ryota inquired about the magic cart they used to carry many air boxes at once and avoid multiple trips. Ryota realized that having a magic cart would make their lives much easier. He wanted to get one but needed to talk with Emily first since it was a bit expensive. After returning home, Ryota explained the situation to Emily. They had to decide whether to get a new house or a magic cart first. Emily suggested prioritizing the magic cart, as it would increase their efficiency in carrying drops and enable them to earn money faster for their new home. Although Ryota was a little worried about delaying their move, Emily assured him that she was content with their life together in their current small house. With this understanding, they agreed to visit the magic cart shop the next day. At the shop, they encountered Olga, a distressed little girl. She informed them that her father hadn't returned home yet because he had gone to pick some flowers. Emily mentioned that the only place to find flower drops was in a dungeon called Arsenic. Ryota decided to head to that dungeon to assist Olga's father. Upon reaching the dungeon, Emily explained that the first floor monsters were called Dandrox, stationary and non-aggressive. Ryota initially thought it would be easy to find Olga's father, but the Dandrox blocked their path. Only Emily, with her powerful Thor hammer, could defeat the rocks. After dealing with the Dandrox, they eventually found Olga's father, who had fallen asleep. Ryota tried to wake him up, but the old man seemed unaware of his daughter's worry. He explained that he had come to the dungeon to gather materials for his new magic cart prototype but the Dandrox had impeded his progress. 
Ryota decided to lend a hand and suggested searching for a rare monster, called a flying rock. Emily used her hammer to shatter the flying rock, which dropped the flower the old man needed. They skillfully transform the flower drop into a stray monster and Ryota uses his freezing bullets to capture it. They later return to the dwarf's workshop, where he skillfully transformed the flower drop into a magic cart. Grateful for Ryota's assistance, the dwarf generously gifted them the magic cart prototype. The following day, they filled the cart with drops from the dungeon, gathering twice the usual amount of bamboo shoots. Ryota planned to sell the drops to Urza at the trading center, while Emily headed home to prepare dinner. At the trading center, Ryota noticed Urza facing a difficult situation with an aggressive customer. The customer claimed to have brought enough drop items to be paid 10,000 pilots, but Urza insisted the value was less. Ryota stepped in, defending Urza, and proved her right by accurately calculating the correct prices for the items in his magic cart. The irate customer accused the trading center of scamming and attempted to attack Ryota, but he swiftly neutralized the situation with a freezing bullet. Afterward, Ryota comforted Urza, recognizing that everyone needs help and expressing his desire to protect her. In an unexpected moment, Urza mustered the courage to kiss Ryota, leaving him puzzled. She then resumed her work, and Ryota and Emily returned to the dungeon, earning much more money than before. With their newfound wealth, they could now afford to purchase a more luxurious and spacious place to live. After the move, the rabbit girl started following them because it could smell Ryota's carrot from a distance. As they settled into their new home, Ryota reflected on the progress they had made. With that, our episode comes to an end. Feel free to comment if you're interested in following more of this exciting series. Thanks for your time, if you stayed until the end please like and subscribe for more.